Glory. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, we're in season. I said, I am in season. That means is literally when God prophesied that the children of Israel would come out of Babylon uh, to the day, 70 years to the day they came out. God told them they would come out before they came out. He prophesied to them. And then that whole prophetic generation was released. And um, Zerubbabel, Joshua, Haggai, Zechariah, uh, it, it was in about 42,000 Israelites came out from under Babylonian captivity. Nobody could have dreamed that Babylon would have, the gates would have been breached. And when they were released to the day, exactly 70 years that prophetic generation come out to build. And all these prophecies that we talked about this Sunday came forth. And all these prophecies that God gave for that generation, none of them were fulfilled. Could you imagine? They were not fulfilled. They were all left open for that day. And now we're living in this prophetic generation. Amen? Now we're in the prophetic generation of all this is going to happen. And this 70 years, as we know, has just been fulfilled. Why don't you turn in your Bible? I just want to... Just talk about this a minute. We brushed on this a little bit. Go to Zechariah chapter 10. Glory to God. Zechariah 10. This is where we are. I can't really preach on anything else right now because we are in. We're in it. Amen. Man, I am locked in in prayer. The glory is so different now in, in prayer now. It's, there's such a glory around the lampstand. There's such a glory around these chapters of Revelation chapter 5, literally in the time where God is going to ordain the final days. Amen? I mean, we, are, we can be within hours, days, months, but we're in a season where God's going to finally ordain this final book. And actually, it's, this final book is going to come under ordination, commission by heaven. And the Lord Jesus, it says the, the Lion of Judah is going to open the book. Amen? Chapter 5, it's the lion, it's the lamb standing with seven horns, seven eyes, with the seven spirits of God that are going to soon be poured out. I don't think anybody's ready. When the Holy Ghost came up out of heaven, uh, when the Lord said, wait for the promise of the Father, when he came down, I don't know that any of them were ready for what happened, but the place was shaken. Where there were, I mean, the walls were shaken. The power of God, he made his presence known. He made it known to them. He made it known to the entire city of Jerusalem. He made it known to the Sanhedrin. The first thing he did, these miracles come out. I mean, powerful miracles in the temple. But man, gate, beautiful. Everybody knew him. He'd been there for such a long time. And that condition, 40-something years in that condition. And all he's healed. And he's running around the temple. And I mean, the Holy Ghost, it was on. Amen. Power of God was pouring out into the streets of Jerusalem. They were bringing him on beds and couches. I mean, everything was shaking so powerful into the move of God. And he made that presence known. He's going to do that again. He's going to pour out again. Say, pour out again. We're in the season, literal season. Don't be sleeping during this time. There are people out of alignment right now. I said, how can you be out of alignment right now? We're in a prophetic season like no other season in human history. You can't afford to be out of alignment. Amen? You want to be there waiting. Just like he said, wait in the upper room, pray, watch, watch. Say, watch. Watch what the Father's doing. Watch. Like Michael would say, you got to watch what the Father's doing. We see what the Father's doing. We're watching. Amen? Glory to God. How much more are we accountable? Because we understand what's happening. Amen. The enemy will put, uh, try to lull you to sleep during this time. You got to resist that. You got to stay above that. Amen. You got to stay in a place where your heart's burning. Amen. Stay high in the high places. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in the high places. In the high places, the air is very clear. Your sight is very good. It's very clear in the high places. It only gets convoluted when you're down here. Amen? If you're, if you're in the warfare all the time, you're convoluted by warfare, you can tell if somebody's in warfare all the time because that's all they talk about. You can tell if somebody's in self-pity all the time. That's all they do is self-pity. Amen? You can tell when someone's in the glory because that's all they talk about. Amen? That's all they see. Amen? I remember when um, Matt Sorger, when he, he said, man, I had this prophetic anointing. He goes, it would work in 
And it would work in the kingdom, but it would work in the darkness. I could see darkness as well as the glory. He goes, in the early days, all I was doing is seeing the darkness. I could, I could see principalities standing over cities. And everybody goes, wow. He goes, but every time I got so minded in those areas, my, my gift was just so tuned into the darkness. And God finally had to correct him and said, Matt, I need you to tune that into the glory realm. He goes, when I learned to tune into the glory, it was so much more appealing. He goes, I just didn't even look into the darkness anymore. Amen. Don't get enamored by the darkness because there's nothing there. Amen. Don't get enamored. Get enamored by the kingdom. Get enamored in the realm of glory. God can enamor you constantly. He has a way about him that can constantly enamor you. I used to be enamored with men's gifts. And now... We're carrying a lampstand that only God can light this thing. Amen. And I'm so enamored by what God's calling us to carry and what's about to happen. I can't even look. People hand me books and things all the time. I'm like, I can't read. I, I'm nice. I, I accept it. But I mean, how are you going to replace Revelation chapter 3, 5, 6, Zechariah? I mean, how are you going to replace John 14, 15, 16, 17? I'm so enamored by the word. That I don't have any time to look at anything else. Unless it's, unless it's confirming what God's saying. Amen. So, are you in Zechariah? So, Zechariah 1, 10, chapter 10, verse 1. Zechariah 10, verse 1. Praise the Lord. I'm preaching right out of this constitution. You know, so now I should just preach the whole constitution to you so you'd understand what's actually in these pages. Because I handed somebody, and I'm like, if you read it, you probably won't understand what all that's there for and the way it's been arranged. But it has very specific meaning for the last days. It is the precedence for everything we're asking for. Amen? So it says, ask you the Lord rain. So he asks the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Lord shall make what? Bright clouds and give the showers. That's the seven spirits of God. Showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Do you hear that? Are you one blade in the field? You know, he didn't say he's going to give the rain to the grass of the field. He said to the every one grass. This move of God is going to come up on any and all that are in alignment, that are ready, positioned, hungry, thirsty, and have their eyes on heaven the rain's coming down. Amen. The seven spirits of God are going to pour out. Notice what Joel says, chapter 2, verse 23. He says, be glad then, because he references the latter rain. You children and re of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he will give you the former rain moderately. Whoa. Because Peter actually... He referenced this is that which is spoken in the book of Joel. And Joel calls the former rain a moderate rain. Say moderate. That means what was poured out, believe it or not, in the early church was moderate compared to what he's going to do in the last days. That's what I keep saying. I don't think anybody's prepared for what he's about to release on planet earth. Amen. He said he's going to pour out for you the former rain moderately and he'll cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. Say, and the latter rain. Because so, what's going to happen in this last days is double portion. He's going to give the former and the latter rain together. It's all going to report, pour out all over again. But it's going to be the latter rain too. Say, latter rain. What is spoken of in Zechariah 10, say, latter rain. Woo, the latter, ask the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. Watch for the rain. Watch, what's he mean by rain? We're not looking for God to just rain upon a service. We're looking for him to release the rain of the seven spirits of God. Amen? That is what's going to shift and change everything. Verse 3, Zechariah 10, mine anger was kindled against the shepherds. I punish the goats. Don't want to be a goat. If you're in goat land, you're in bad shape. Amen. For the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah. Say house of Judah. 
and made them as his goodly horse in the battle. I wish Sharon brought this out in the, in the when we were talking about the white horse, and she had this revelation. I'm like, man, I started looking at that, and all of a sudden it just went boom. And now it's interesting because when God does something in the book of Revelation, He's going to confirm that God always confirms His worth in the mouth, word in the mouth of two or three witnesses. He's not going to have an event. Like Revelation chapter 5 where he releases the seven spirits of God and the kings and priests reign in the earth and he opens the seal and the white horse begins to run. He's not going to do that without confirming that in another chapter. God will always confirm his word in the mouth of two or three. Amen? Say two or three. Two or three. So he's talking about this white horse. Now hold your finger there. Uh, if you're on iPad, just come back to it later. Go to Revelations chapter 5 for a minute. We got into this the other day. And so the, the elders are collecting the prayers of the saints. There is a company. There is a bridal company of saints that are actually praying into this. They're in sync. They know what's happening. Their prayers are being collected as incense into the bowls. Amen. All of this is part of this commissioning of the seven spirits of God. And when the Lord, when the Father gives the, the, the authorization, the Lord will release what's on him. Amen. When he releases the seven spirits of God, the, which is a fancy term for the Holy Spirit, but he's carrying seven inheritances he's going to release into the, the early and the latter rain that's coming down. Amen? It's all going to come out from the right hand of God. And that's when he begins, they begin to sing the song. And it says, where is your lamb to receive, say, receive? Dunamis. That's what the first great inheritance is going to come. We have access to dunamis now. Amen. We have access in our covenant. We have access, but he's bringing a whole nother supply of it. Amen. And, gener and wealth, that word wealth, riches is generational wealth. That is one of the great, great things that's going to, and we all know this, is going to happen in this season is the great transference of wealth in this last day is the church is crowned wealth, wisdom, honor, glory, blessing. And, and so he, they begin to sing, thou hast made us kings and priests unto our God. Now, I want you to fast forward here to chapter 6. Go to chapter 6. Because this is where he opens the seal. He's the, he's the only one that's qualified. Isn't it amazing? He said, the Lion of Judah hath prevailed to open the book. But on the Lamb is the seven spirits of God. But who opens the book? Yes, the Lion, the King. Why? Because that first seal, he's going to open that seal literally if you know what's happening, thank God we know what's happening. So we're wanting this to happen. If you don't know what's happening, you're like afraid of this book. But if you do know what's happening, we want it. We say, even so, come. We're actually praying for this to happen. We're joining into the celebration. The elders were celebrating this in chapter 5. They wanted this because the, it was finally the kings and the priests would rule and reign in the earth. There is a season like no other season for us. Amen? The body of Christ, the bridal company. We are going to move into a season. I don't think anybody even knows what this is going to look like, but imagine every single God-ordained vision being simultaneously financed with more than enough that you could ever spend. All of a sudden, it's there. Amen? There are going to be people who are going to receive the wealth transfer, and they're going to sit on it because they don't know what it's here for. And then there are going to be people who understand, like us, what this wealth was given for. Amen. Why God gave more than anybody could spend in 10 generations. And you're only going to be here for a short season. We must know. And it's the, the fruit factor that's going to take place for those who understand the season we're living in. Because there's going to be a euphoric feeling when all this happens. Like, oh, we're going to be here forever. And we're not. We're not. Because there's another church after the church of Philadelphia. Laodicea church, what they says, I'm rich. They're, they're basically were fat. They were rich. Blind. It says, I have need of nothing. Actually, I want to read you exactly what they say. It's pretty interesting. That is part of his church. But notice this. 
He says, An angel church right in the Laodiceans, these things saith he, that, saith he, amen, faithful and true, the beginning and creation of God. He goes, I know that works, for thou art neither cold, say no cold, nor hot. I would you were cold or hot, because you're lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. I'll what? Because, boy, the Pentecostals love that. They get their bony finger and he'll spew you out of your mouth if you don't get down here and repent. He says, because thou sayest, because. This is what he was upset about. He said, it, 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 the lukewarmness was a condition. He goes, because what your heart is saying. Because you sayest, I'm rich. Does that sound like, where do you think they got those riches the wealth transference. They came out from the church of Philadelphia. They didn't understand the season they were living in. Because they say, I'm rich. I've been increased with goods. I have a need of nothing. You see that? What do you see there? Self, self-sufficiency, disconnection. And I know it's not that what? You're wretched, miserable, poor, blind man. I counsel thee to buy gold tried by fire. I don't want to be in that church. Anybody want to be in that church? He did not, by the way, tell them they were going to be spared from the hour of tribulation coming on the earth. Who did he tell they would be? The church of Philadelphia said, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation coming upon the whole world. That's how we know these two last churches our final last day churches. Amen. We're in the day. We're in the hour. We're in the season. We want the book to open. Go back to chapter 6. So I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. The first seal. You know what's in that seal? This constitution is in that seal. Not mine, but all that's going to happen in that first seal is right here. Amen? And a whole lot more. But God's given us a lot of understanding of what's taking place in this seal. He says, I heard as it was a noise of thunder. Say a noise of thunder. God is going to make this known. Amen? I heard somebody say, oh yeah, well the first five seals have already opened. I'm like, no. If God had opened those first five seals, you would know that. Yeah, there have been wars and famine and earthquake, but nothing. It says they're going to wipe out a fourth part of the entire earth. The, four, the three horses that follow the white horse, they'll take a fourth of the earth with them. That's just the beginning. Say the beginning. He said, I saw one of the four beasts, four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Say a white horse. Woo! And he said, he... That set on him had a bow. Had a bow. Say bow. Now put your finger there and go back to Zechariah 10, verse 3. And he said, oh, The Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of what? Judah, house of kings. And he shall made him his goodly horse in the battle. His goodly horse in the battle, right? Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him what? The battle bow. Say the battle bow. Isn't that interesting? Two, two horses, two battle bows. Hmm. Everyone say hmm. Hmm. He said out of him, he said he went forth and a crown, say a crown, was given. Now a lot of people preach this as the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not given a crown. The Antichrist takes, amen? He takes. God giveth. The devil taketh. The crown was given. Where was that crown given? When was that crown given? Where was it given? It was given in Revelation chapter 3. When he that has the key, say he, the key to the house the house of David, the house of David, the monarchy of David. See, David's house was first and foremost a kingly house. It was a kingly house with a 24-hour priesthood, 
But that house of David was a kingly house of the order key of the house of David. He that has the key, Jesus has the key. It was given. He, it's a treasury key given by the house of David. He openeth that house. If he's opening that house, he's going to release what's in that house. Amen. And he tells him, let no man take your crown. A crown came out from the Lord. He gave and he crowned that church. And when he crowned that church, that church is the rider of this white horse. And not glorious. Of course, you know this already, but that church of Philadelphia, the final last day church that's crowned becomes the rider of this white horse. And it rides going forth, conquering to conquer the kings and priests reigning in the earth. Isn't that glorious? And now, Zechariah tells us, now I want you to see this, is some, most, you let it know, but people talk to me and say, well, I, you know, how do you know that this horse is not one of the, the end time, it is an end time horse, it's just not one of the destructive horses. You'll see that because he talks about a war horse, a red war horse, a black horse of famine, and a pale horse of death and hell. He talks about the three of them. Now watch verse 8, what he says, very powerful, and he says, I looked. And behold, a pale horse, and his name, and the name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him. And power, say power, was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. Say fourth. That's 25%. There is no time in history 25% of the world was wiped out. Because a lot of these people, well, the book of Revelation is already up. Listen. 25% of the earth being wiped out, you would have known that. There is no war in history that's wiped out 25% of the earth. These three riders are going to take 25% of the earth with them. That is very, very bad news for anybody that's here. Notice what he says. Power is given unto them, them, and then he, he describes them, them, over a fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword, specifically speaking of the red horse that kills with a sword. Verse 4, there went another horse that was red and power was given unto him that sat there on to take peace from the earth that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Sword. Say sword. It was a war horse. He's not going to literally go kill 25% uh, of the earth with a sword. It's figuratively speaking war is going to kill 25% of the earth. This red horse, we haven't even seen wars like the ones that are coming. Amen? This red, there have been wars, and they've been global wars, but nothing like this one that's going to take 25% of the earth. He says, kill with a sword, that's red horse. Amen? And what was the second one? Verse 8, to kill with a sword, red horse. Power was given to him before the fourth part to kill with the sword and with hunger. That was specifically speaking of the black horse. And with death and the beast of the earth. The death was the pale horse. So the three horses, red, black, pale, those three were the destructive whorehouses. You do not see the white horse mentioned, the function of the white horse mentioning. He's going forth conquering to conquer. You do not see his function listed in the destructiveness of 25% of the earth because he's not a destructive war. He's, a, he's not a destructive horse. He is a godly kingdom war horse. Amen? Amen. Isn't that glorious? He's the one we want to run. We are looking for this fight. The prophets are prophesying. Everyone's looking into this day. Everyone's seeing it. We happen to see it a little more clear because God's given us some amazing revelation, but we're in season right now. Usually when we were preaching this, it was still out in the future. This literally, folks, can happen any day. God can open that book in any moment now because we are officially in season. The word of the Lord has come to pass. The word of the Lord of the Zerubbabel now is in operation. The golden lampstand is in operation, which is the seven spirits of God, which is what's going to release in all the earth. Glory. Say Glory which is the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, our King Christ. He's ready to build. The foundation's been laid. He's ready to build the last day. Say so he's ready to build. All right, go to Zechariah 10. This is a refresher course because all you've already heard this. Amen. 
it's good to hear it again. Just stay up. Amen. This is stuff we're praying into right now. Amen. We're holding this. Say, even come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, um, Zechariah 10, when he talks about this horse in verse 4, he says, the goodly war horse, I love it, the, the, the tribe of Judah, say Judah. Okay, so how do we know Judah's the rider in Revelation? Because, he, because, because the Lord has the house, he has the key to the house of what? David, is that a house of who? Judah. All the kings came out of Judah. David was of Judah. Caleb, that inherited Mount Hebron, was of Judah. Every king came out of Judah, the house of kings. So he that had the key of the house of David, he opens the crown. He's opening the blessing of Judah. Amen? So we know the riders, the riders of Judah, that's us. The church being crowned. Amen? See how it all fits together? Are you breathing tonight? You know, I mean, the Holy Ghost could come in here any moment and shake the whole place down, you know, you know. Amen. So we know the house of Judah was David's house. He that had the key to that house opens that door. So the house of the Judah is the rider of the white horse, which is who? Church of Philadelphia. Amen. Which is who? Body of Christ. Final remnant bridal company. Not the whole body. Because there, there are a lot of people out there that call themselves Christian. It's easy to call yourself a Christian in America. Amen? But this never, I mean, you don't even go to church. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, I know the Lord. Really? Okay. Have you said hi to him in the last 10 years? He says, and they'll be... And made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him, out of this war horse, or proceeding from him, here's his functions. This is what gets really powerful. Out of him comes forth the corner. Say the corner. That corner is the cornerstone, the final headstone. Watch what Psalms 118 says. I'm just reading right out of the Constitution here. The stone which the builder refused... The builders refused has become the headstone, say the headstone of the corner. What was the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel? You will bring forth what? The headstone, which is, NIV calls it the final stone. Say the final stone. The stone that the builders refused as the foundation stone has now become the final headstone. Isn't it amazing that that priesthood that rejected him is the very priesthood that has fully confirmed with their coin, front and back, everything that's about to happen. Only God can do that. Hallelujah. I'm like, when I'm holding it, I was praying with it today, and I was holding it, I'm like, I was in my hand, I'm like, Lord, your priesthood that rejected you. <laughs> They have confirmed everything that's about to happen, and they don't even know. And they're selling their coins to raise money for their temple, and they're confirming the entire outpouring of the last days. They put it on one coin. I put it in 178 pages of a constitution. They put it on one coin this big. And the whole thing is there. Isn't that awesome? Man, thank God, Chris, that you saw that throne that throne chair, the, it was a temple. I'm like, that is the weird, when I first saw it, I mean, that is a weird looking temple. But, I mean, it was a throne chair with a lampstand underneath it. I mean, who does that? But God, isn't that awesome? We, can, we can't tire of this, even though it's awesome. We can't tire of just the magnificence of God's wisdom. But out of this war horse is going to come what? The final headstone. The final stone. He's going to ride in the final stone. Isn't that awesome? That's what he's saying here. Now notice Psalms 18 said, The stone which the builders refused has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be what? Glad in it. 
Save, this is the day, the hour that the Lord has made. We rejoice. Say, save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. I beseech thee, send now prosperity. That's in Psalms 18, speaking of the final stone. Send it now, Lord. Send it now. The stone that the builders rejected has become the head, and out of this white horse is going to come the final headstone, the lampstand, the final stone. The white horse is going to carry the lampstand throughout the earth. It's the bridal company of believers carrying the lampstand on a white horse. And that glorious? Woo! Kind of interesting you gave that word about running because we ran the other night. Was it Wednesday night we took off? And um, kind of interesting because I haven't ran. I've only run a couple of times, three, maybe three or four times I can remember. And maybe more, but once I can remember, one of the one profound ones that I had remembered when I was with, uh, um, I was in Dallas, out of the will of God, but I was only a month away from entering into full-time ministry which was everything back then and um i won't tell you why i was in dallas but that's another story i was looking for anna i just didn't know it hallelujah she was coming from iceland i thought she was in dallas and anyway i was in this meeting rodney Howard brown's meeting and it was actually in fort worth that night i was living in dallas and we drove over there we're in this meeting and he was just preaching, just preaching like I'm preaching right now, and the power of God hits me. There was probably 1,500 people in this building or more, very large church. And the power of God hits me while he's preaching. And I had never done this in my life, ever. But the Spirit of God hit me and said, run. I'm like, outside? He said, run now. And he hit me, and I ran around that place, that sanctuary. 1,500 people watched me run, and nobody got up and ran with me. And I ran all the way around that place. You know, that's easier said than done because your mind the whole time while the Spirit of God's on you, I'm like, what am I doing? What My feet are going, but what am I doing? What are you doing? The whole time you're running. And I come around, I did a whole lap, and I come around to the altar, and the Spirit of God hits me, and I fall out. Rodney goes, oh, well, looks like he was blessed, and he just keeps going. Uh, he didn't know this, but within 30 days, God had brought me back to Houston and separated me to full-time ministry. Amen? That was my victory lap. And I believe, I don't know when that word came, but every time we run, there's something happening. Amen. We ran the other night. There was a victory lap from heaven. Amen. I mean, there was a victory lap. You were in here. You could feel the celebration that was taking place that we were in season now. We made it. We made, everyone look at your neighbor and say, we made it. We made it. We made it. We are going to receive the commission. Not us. God's going to commission his lamp. Amen. But we're lamp bearers. Amen. And he's going to give the early and the latter rain to every one grass in the field. If you're one grass in the field, raise your hand. Amen. We're going to get the early and the latter rain together. What that looks like, only heaven's going to know. I'm quite sure there'll be a lot of carpet time. With the glory of God. We know from this from this word, how it's going to break out. Amen. People are going to try to get back in their old ministry vehicles. It's not going to work. It's a new thing. You're not going to be able to do it the old way. It's going to be a new thing. It's going to run like lightning. Amen. The white horse is going to run like lightning. Whew. We're in season, Father. We already looked at this in Revelations 1. Out of him came the battle bow. So he connected that rider that day. I remember when he did that. I'm like, oh, my God, he connected the white horse. But the one of the more profound things, and I'll close with this, um, the one of the most profound things about spoken here in Zechariah, how you know that you know that you know, he tied it into the church of Philadelphia with this, with this verse right here. He said, out of him comes forth the nail. Even the scholars knew that that was talking about Isaiah 22. But they didn't know it was talking about Revelation chapter 6. They did not know that it was talking about the church of Philadelphia. Out of him came forth what? The nail. 
say the nail. He's going to establish the nail. So go to Isaiah 22 and we'll close within an hour. And he also, out of him, every oppressor together, he's going to, it's going to remove oppression. We don't even talk about that. But the fourth thing he's going to do is remove oppression from the land. Isn't that awesome? The white horse is going to remove oppression from the land. We're already seeing now the political system being turned upside down. And the, the haters are hating, but it's not changing anything. It's still being turned upside down. God is, is getting ready. His white horse is going to birth out of this nation. But he's going to send it out all over the world. Because God has the covering it needs. Amen. Glory to God. Woo. Thank you, Father. The white horse is going to run with political covering, which is awesome. The early church didn't have the political covering in there. They, they ran under persecution. We run with power and favor. God's done that because he's got Osiris in office. They believe in his name now. Like him or not, he is the Cyrus. And Jerusalem's Sanhedrin has confirmed that. Amen? And the 70 years has been fulfilled. Booyah! Amen? All right, so let's read this and then we can go buffet our body or whatever you want to do. Isaiah 22, verse 15. He said, this is the word of the Lord unto Shebna, the treasurer. Say the treasurer. He is a treasurer. Shebna, he gets fired. He gets a lot of pride. He wants to be buried with all the fathers. He wants the status. And, and, and I just think a few things God didn't like about him. Obviously, he fired him. Amen. And so verse 19 says, I will drive thee from thy station, from thy state. Shall I pull thee down? And it shall come to pass in that day that I'll call my servant Eliakim, Christ. I'll clothe him with thy robe. That means I'm going to give him your robe. Strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit what? Thy government. And the King James said, I will commit thy government unto his hand. The treasury government I will commit. And he will be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The house of what? And to the what? The house of what? Huh? Who was the rider of the, the horse? Judah. You see it? See it all tie in? And the key to the house of David, the only other time this key is mentioned, is to the church of Philadelphia. The key, that, imagine God speaking to a church, telling him, I'm going to put a kingly anointing on you. And the key to the house of David, I'll lay upon his shoulder, Benjamin, so he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. I'll fasten him. Say, I'll fasten him. Is a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. This is Christ. And they shall hang upon him all, say all, the glory of the Father's house. The offspring and the issue, the vessel small. <laughs> Look at that. He says, in that day, say the Lord, he shall, the nail, in that day, say in that day, what? The day he opens the house. The day he opens and none can shut. In that day shall the nail that is fastened in a sure place, be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off. That's talking about the other nail. But see, he's going to nail the nail. See, he's going to, because I'm going to hang him as a sure nail in the Father's house. And all the glory, see, all the glory of the Father's house is going to be on him. Out of this white horse is going to establish that nail where all the glory of the Father's house is going to be on it's going to be on the church because he's going to open all that to us. The white horse is going to have all that. Isn't that glorious? He's going to remove oppression from the land. Whew, Father, thank you for these days. I hear the Spirit of the Lord said, you're not going to get to teach like this very much longer. Because there's coming a day you'll speak a word and whole cities will shift. You'll speak a word, and the glories of heaven will come down. Says the Spirit of the Lord, that which has been spoken has been spoken. That which has been taught has been taught. That which is in the foundation is the foundation. But that which is in the building, saith the Lord, 
that which is in the building, signs, miracles, wonders, and demonstrations of a kingly house, a kingly house, says the Spirit of the Lord. It is the manifestation of the hour and the day of a kingly house, for the world will see the kingly government coming out from my throne, says the Spirit of the Lord. As I'm preparing the riders of this last hour, a crown will be given. And this is, says the Spirit of the Lord, your witness. This is your sign. When the crown has been given, the white horse will release. It'll be first the crown, then the release of the white horse. I'll crown my church, and then all things will come to pass, saith the Lord. Whew. Glory to God forever. Listen, you got to be bold in your prayers now. You got to pray like a joint heir. Don't pray as an orphan. You pray as a joint heir now. Orphans are not going to ride this horse, heirs are going to ride it. Pray as an heir. Amen. When you pray as an heir, you're riding as a joint heir. That's why God's got to remove all the orphan dysfunction from our life amen we're riding as sons we're riding as heirs in this last hour father thank you for your glory thank you for the grace thank you for the amazing season that we're now in everything is shifted father we're now in season we pray listen i got to share this with you before i close my second close it's summertime. We're not in a hurry. Hallelujah. This is my second. Listen, when you pray, you pray as an heir. Amen. You pray, see and know and understand your position in this hour. Don't stand there. Well, it's not me. I don't know. No, you can't do that because that is you. God called you to hear these things. There's a whole body out there that hasn't heard any of this yet, but they know it's coming. They see different pieces and different pieces. They may not have heard it all laid out like this, but they know something major is coming from heaven. And it's going to, they know there's the wealth transference crowd that knows wealth trans, and then there's a the power crowd that knows power is coming, and it's all coming. Amen? But you got to know that God called you. He's called you to be a writer. He's going to crown you. You have to know you're going to be crowned. He sees you that way. You have to see yourself that way. You know, we're praying right now. I'm telling, I told the intercessors this yesterday. I'm going to tell you. You know what we're praying into right now? We're praying specifically for three major things that will fulfill half this constitution in one event. Three major things can happen in one event. You know what we're praying for? The eyewitness. This lamp is full of eyewitnesses, 144,000. Don't you think the Lord's going to share, show himself? He's going to show himself to 144,000. He's going to show himself to the two witnesses. They're carrying the lamp in the tribulation age. We carry it pre-tribulation. He's going to show himself. That witness must come forth. The commissioning of the lampstand by the Lord Jesus himself. He's going to commission this. Amen. And the seven spirits of God coming upon that commission. When the seven spirits of God come, the horse is launched. Amen. When that first seal opens, the seven spirits of God release from the earth. They release out of heaven into the earth. Whew. Glory to God. We're praying that right now. Right now. What do you think that incense is coming up? That's, that's not prayers of unbelief. If God's collecting incense in heaven because he respects the prayers that are being prayed. If those elders are collecting prayers, they're not prayers of unbelief. They're prayers that are full of faith, full of alignment, full of expectation, full of watching, watching prayers. Seeing, Father, we see what you're doing. We agree with what you're doing. We receive in what you're doing. We join in what you're doing. Amen? Prayers of heirs. Prayers of joint heirs. Amen. We come out of dysfunction. Come out from the orphan spirit. Come in to sonship. Come in to joint heirship. Pray like an heir. Believe like you're an heir. 
Amen? Be bold like you're an heir. You have to make the shift. You have to make that shift. You think differently. You act differently. You speak differently. You walk differently. Amen? If God has honored us with these revelations to let us see what's happening before it happens, then we need to honor Him. Amen? And believe what He has said. There is no unworthiness, time for unworthiness to ride the white horse. you got to get that out now. There was a time you could walk in unworthiness. That's not the time anymore. Amen? It's a time to grow up very fast. You can grow very fast with God if you'll agree with what He says. And start believing. No, even if things in you scream, I believe what you say. I am a rider. I've been called to ride that horse. I will ride it as a joint heir with you. I receive that I'm a joint heir. I receive that I'm seated together in heavenly places in and at your throne. And your lap is within me. And I hold it gracefully. I hold it with humility. But I hold it with the confidence of who you made me to be. And the knowing of the season and the time that I live in. This is that which was spoken of in the book of Zechariah. This is that that was spoken of in the book of Revelation. I am a writer and I'm ordained so. And I receive and stand and watch and wait for the commissioning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's a whole different that's the kind of incense God's looking for. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Listen, this is where we are right now. We're in, we're in the upper room right now, waiting. God has told us about, wait for the promise of my Father. Wait for the seven spirits of God. Labor and occupy what you're doing, but watch and wait for the seven spirits of God that are coming. Amen. Whew. I'm telling you, we are in season. The Lord is going to start making his appearances. He is going to make his appearances. I can't explain to you the kind of faith that's involved. It's part of the testimony of his last day church. He's going to show himself to the apostles. He's going to show himself to all the people around the apostles. It's part of the testimony. We have seen the resurrected king. We have seen him. We have seen him with our own eyes. We have heard his voice. We have touched his hands. That which we say to you is not secondhand faith knowledge. It's firsthand testimony. And the Holy Spirit, seven spirits of God, will be there to back up the testimony. The highest testimony given to men is the apostolic eyewitness. Whew. There's no higher testimony. Behold, you receive what? Man, I can't quit. Power. They all preach about that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you to what? Be my witness. He was standing in front of them in Luke 24 when he said that in, an eye, in a resurrected state. Standing, he said, you'll be my witnesses. You'll bear the witness you've seen me in a resurrected state. Whew. Thank you, Father. We will bear the witness. You know what the final apostles are going to bear witness to? The book has been opened. The book has been opened. You're not. You're in the last days now. Time has been numbered. Well, we don't believe you. It doesn't matter if you believe us or not. The Holy Ghost, seven spirits of God, is with us to demonstrate. The book's been opened. Time will soon be no longer. You don't get to live out generations anymore. We're in the season. The book has opened. This is that was spoken of in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. This white horse. Because there's three more following and you don't want to be here when they show up. Whew. You think God wants to pour wrath upon the world without warning that generation, even if they are asleep. He's going to raise up brand new testimony with fire. With glory and power. He's going to shake cities and let them know. Your time is no longer. You better make it on the first train. You don't want to be here. Because it will cost your life. If you wait. 
You go up on the first one, it's grace. The second one's going to cost your life. Pretty sobering, isn't it? I'm not you, but I'm going on the first slow. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for the glory. Thank you, Father, for the eyewitness. Thank you, Father, we are heirs. We are heirs of these promises. We watch, we wait, we look, we see. We're in agreement with the times that we live in as the sons of Issachar. We're in agreement. We've been given an understanding of the time. We stand in agreement with the times that we live in, Father, and the hour we live in. With a boldness, Father, we stand even so. Let thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Send now thy seven lamps burning in heaven. Grant this house, everyone in this, under the sound of my voice, grant the witness. Everyone in the upper room saw him. Grant this house a very special favor, Father. A very special grace for this house to see the Lord, the whole house, Father. Granted, I'm bold because I know if you appear to 144,000, it's in the very lamp that we carry that you will appear to us. How many of you feel that faith? How many of you feel that, that everything's shifting now? It's not way out there anymore. It's here. I'm not praying like it's 10 years out anymore. I'm in season now. Amen? This lamp's in season. These words are going to become... I, I can't quit preaching. <laughs> i got to let you out of here. These words are going to come flesh. This glory is going to dwell among us. I believe God's going to birth that lampstand right here in this house. If you want to know the real truth, I believe it's going to birth right here. I believe... That our house is called to release this lamp unto all nations. That's a very bold statement. And I'm not saying that proudfully. I'm just saying that because of what's been given. I believe God's going to bring nations here. And we're going to plant the lamp in their heart. With what took us 30 years, we'll be able to release it. And they'll be able to take the lamp back into their nation. Pow! 